why I use Google Jamboard so you can collaborate. That's two people on the same document at the same time, or maybe even more than two. Or maybe not at the same time, maybe I work on it and then someone else works on it later and then I come back to it, but we're using the same document and we're on there together. And so now what you can do in Jamboard is they have version history. So this has come back. You're going to go to the three dots menu. This is the more actions menu where you can see the version history. Now you can see on this Jamboard I have what I had written and on this frame this is what Krista has put and this is what I put and here's what Krista put and here's what we put together. So what does that look like in the Jamboard history? So I go to the three dots and I see version history. Now what you'll see over here in the version history is the different edits. When I click here on March 16th at 10.07, I can see that it was blank. I can actually click on the timestamp. Do you see how it now makes it editable? So I can indicate that it was blank at this version. So I can name those versions. Now pay attention to the tiny triangle here, which will expand the detailed versions. So what you can see is that during this period of collaboration, both Krista and I were working on this jam together. But when I do the expanded version out, you can see those different edits. So you can see that I added a Bitmoji and there is only one frame and then I have written on it and then Krista has made some edits and I go to the second frame and I can see that Krista was here. Now the only way that I can tell what Krista did versus what I did, not very easily. When I look at the previous version, I can compare manually from frame to frame what's here, what's missing. The version history, unlike Google Docs in Jamboard, does not show the individual edits that were made in that version or necessarily by who. So I can see over here in Jamboard that it says Krista Weller edited at 1010 and this is what the document looked like at 1010 that there were only two frames. So by comparing it to the 1008 version which only had one frame to the 1010 version I can see that there is an additional frame and a post-it note and again the only reason I know that was Krista is because she put her name on it. So you have to do a little detective work if you want to figure out who put what when, and it gets a little muddier. So what you're going to notice here is at 10.11, both Krista and I were working on it at the same time. So when I click on this, I'm going to call this working together. You can name the versions. I like to do that. So when I go to this version, I can see that there are four frames. So the first frame, the second frame, the third frame, and the fourth frame. And during this version, who wrote what? Who added that fourth frame? I don't know. Who put the bitmoji on there? Well, unless I know that it wasn't me, that must have been my collaborator. If I had multiple people, I really wouldn't have a way of knowing. So just to be aware that you are not able to see the who did what uh, other than using detective work. However, I can come over here to the three dots on any particular version and restore this version or I can choose restore this version. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to restore and you'll see that I'm going to go from having six frames back down to four frames. As soon as this gets out of my way, you'll be able to see that. There we go. Four frames. And so that's what it looked like earlier. So I'm able to roll it back to the previous version. So I'm going to go back to the three dots. I'm going to see the version history and I'm going to come here. I'm going to expand out the additional versions and I'm going to come in here. I'm going to call this one yes. So it's showing me what edit was made on that one. I can name it. And I'm going to go ahead and go to these three dots and instead of restoring this version, I'm going to make a copy. So now what happens when I make a copy is I want to capture this version and pull it out. So I'm going to make a copy. It allows me to rename it. And you'll see that it is opening an entirely new tab. So it has copied the jam. So now I have two jams with that previous version. So I can restore it to the previous version or if I like it in its current state, but I also want to like take it a leap from that particular part. For example, 
I like to make a template. This is what it looked like before I shared it with students. I forgot to make a copy of it maybe before I share with students, no problem. I go back to the version before students edit it and make a copy then, and I'm back to the template. And so version history allows me to, and notice this will have no version history because I made a copy, so the only thing I have here is the copy, but I do have all six frames. Whereas back over here, I only have four because I had restored it.